Welcome to the podcast. It is Fitzy and Whipper Hello. with Kate Ritchie. Oh, yeah, big podcast coming up. Is it really? We have actually asked Fitzy to leave the studio for the recording at the top of this podcast. Um, the topic he, is... he tends to muck it up. He does. Not only that, um, he had steam coming out of his ear because the topic was um, parking inspectors. The sheriff. I was about to burp. You did burp. Yeah, I but heard I you burp. Yeah, away from the microphone. Do you mean steam coming out of his ears, ears. or ear? Because you just said one, ear, and then yeah. I, I was thinking, I what a skill to be able to <laughs> shut off the steam. I couldn't from, see that side of his head. From one ear. He was so angry. Yeah. And I, I, as much as, as I agree mm. with what he had to say, I do think that everybody is human, and I, I did have an opposing view. Well, yeah, I could see, though, on his hand. He still had a few of the parking inspector's teeth oh. just stuck in his knuckles. Um, so we will explain explain what's gone on with Fitzy and the parking inspector. That's part of the podcast today. Thank you very much, Whip. Uh, the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is exciting, Fitz. One of Australian TV favourite shows. Looks like it could be returning. It hasn't been on since the 90s. Ladies and gentlemen. Radiators ready! Oh, radiators are back. Wow. I mean, this, there, there was an ad that's gone out looking for people to not only apply because they want to film in September and October, uh, apply as competitors on the show. They're also looking for the Gladiators. Well, I went and saw a filming of the the last uh, Gladiators that they did because Tommy Williams was hosting it. That's right. Who was he hosting with? I can't remember. No, Find but, out, Tommy. So the idea, if you haven't seen the show, if you haven't seen Gladiators before, it's 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 like British Bulldogs until it gets down to one person. Mm. It's just one person trying to get to somewhere else why a Gladiator has to try and stop them. Mm. That's the rough idea, isn't it? Yes. And you've got these beasts of men and women that are so fit and so strong and you have to have the skills to get past them. Very hard. There was like ready. a there was a gauntlet type cha- challenge that you had to get past. Very hard. Yeah. It like was I a... mean, you've got five or six huge people, and you've they're throwing stuff at you and prodding you with these huge sticks. And sometimes they were small tunnels, yeah. and you had to try and get past them. I mean, you had you've got Comet standing there, Bionic. You've got Electro. You got Phantom. You got Viper. Is this on Channel Seven? I don't know. Which platform they're Who's looking gonna at? Who's going to take it, Tommy? It is Channel oh, 7. It was You're bouncing spot on. around between 7 and oh, 10. Oh, bouncing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Here's wow. what it says. The update, Sticks. the reboot. Australian television sources say Channel 7 is confirming... Oh, they've confirmed they are not the ones commissioning the, um, the revival. Uh, industry rumours suggest Channel 10. Well, it, 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 has anyone watched the documentary? It's on Netflix or something. It's an American show similar to Gladiators. It was in the 80s. And contestants would go on there and they had a, a team of these huge people and you had to yeah. get past them. But they got so far ahead of themselves and got these huge egos, they all got on the gear. Uh-huh. They all started hooking up with each other. That's right. And it was in a world of their own. <laughs> they, all, they all And they all got on the steroids yep, to yep. try to outdo each other. I think Vulcan and got it, into Storm and then Hammer Vulcan. turned up and uh, got into Thunder and Thunder got into Viper. Got and, his oh. hammer out. It was all over. <laughs> oh. It was just completely out of control. If we can't, tried to call Tommy Williams this morning, should we give him a buzz as the host? Is he out on the paddleboard? Yeah, or? he'd be out on the board. Did Mike Whitney host the first he run of it? He did. It was, yeah. I'm certain Mike Whitney hosts the first run and you had to go up a pyramid to yeah. the final challenge was you, you race up a pyramid and they was gladiators all the way up the what pyramid. And I remember AFL players went on it and Johnny Platten, the rat, the rat. Um, he went on it and he, he would be five foot three. He's the size of a jockey and I reckon did he, he, get around he got all the way to the top of that mountain yeah. and some bloke picked him up and threw him <laughs> off the mountain. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Johnny Platten. His coach would have been going, well, he's out for four weeks. <laughs> be honest with me, MDG. Yeah. Do you think you could be a gladiator? That's... I mean, I'm a... I would do you? reformer Pilates, so I guess uh, I'm naturally qualified. <laughs> Where's Tommy Williams? Do you think he would host it again? Tommy's probably training himself for gladiators. Yeah, he would be. Without no, he'd be out. He'd be out in the ocean. Yeah. He'd be kayaking. Serious? Yeah. Six twenty-five yeah, he'd, he'd, in he'd, one degree. Actually, it's freezing it's out freezing. there this morning. Yeah. He's yeah. chosen to stay no, in bed. He's not picking that up. Tommy, uh, there's a nice tie-in too. If anybody wants to train for gladiators, we might have to uh, reboot the gladiator running club sequence. Oh. Oh. That is so good. And maybe for the running club, we could mm. just get a bunch of roided, jacked 
people yeah, on the okay. track and yeah. you have to they just try to flatten us. Yes, and as, you've got to get and, around. And whoever's the last person to make it alive <laughs> end up in the fountain gets to keep their singlet. Oh, I think we should we should incorporate it here in Denova or That's something like bad. that. Someone first day on the job they yep. have to get past the gauntlet in oh the kitchen God. or something like that. We should that. get a coffee guys. Why is there a guy in spandex trying to tackle me? <laughs> Whatif.com helps Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, late checkout and spa all before you can say brekkie buffet. Jump on the What If app and get started. What If, it's Aussie for travel. I lost my call last night, guys. I've got to admit it right here on the show. Oh my and God. Okay. what I want to ask for, 13, 20, 4, 10, how much did it escalate? Well, is BJ OK? No, it's not with my wife. Oh, good. Lenny, again, another earring. Is it your mum? Yeah, Mama? how much did it escalate with the parking inspector? Oh. Oh. OK, the friendly parking inspector. So I'm going to set this up for you, Kate. And I'm luck- luckily I've got a representative over here from the area. Footy training last night, Kate. Um, and it was footy training. A lot of kids from New South Wales had driven a long way to get to this footy training last night. It was across the road. More Park it was across the road from the SCG. So it's the Centennial Parklands. Oh, I didn't know yes. it was the Centennial oh, Parklands. Ambassador to the Centennial Parklands. Are you? Yeah, well, yeah. You, you can... Are you, is that a, an official role, or do you well, just say that? He's bought, no. he bought a brick. Well, I mean... <laughs> Did you? Well, if you oh, make... Can you buy a brick? Well, it's a paver. Um... <laughs> can you buy a park bench? You know when yeah, you, you see those little ten... park benches? $10,000. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, maybe go for the $5,000 plaque on a tree. We've um... just got seven park benches and yeah. four pavers. I sleep on most <laughs> of them. Okay, so you're there. What time is this? Okay, so the footy training was on, and it was yeah. ga- it was a uh, game simulation. It was pretty big. So, the, I mean, there was, I was talking to parents. L- spoke to this lovely lady who'd driven her son mm-hmm. all the way from Coffs Harbour. Wow. Oh. So what happened, it, there were so many people there that you couldn't get a park out the front. Now, that, that, that's there's parking signs there and you've got to pay for those. And then we found next to the Oval, there's a roundabout and there was an opening at the roundabout and we looked in and there was people parked in this area okay. next to the Oval. So people started pulling into there because they couldn't get a park out the front and everyone started parking in yep. there. There would have re- been around about 15 cars in there. Okay, because so, once one goes, yeah. they're like, All right, okay, that's... That's a good well, spot. Sense. I'll get in there too. So then all of a sudden, halfway through the game, this mum in hysterics comes over and goes, has anyone parked their car over here? Because they're handing out parking fines right now. So I run over. It would have been about 50 metres away. Two blokes there representing Centennial Parklands. Okay. One's doing... The tickets, right? Yeah. Are yep. they in high vis or do they have yes. like secret uniforms? They did have high vis on, right? Okay. And then the other one goes, All right, well, you keep handing out the tickets while I deal with these guys. <laughs> oh. Smug look on his face. I said, Mate, where's the signs? He goes, There's no signs. And I said, well, you can't give us a ticket, mate. And he said, well, if you actually look over there at the barrier, someone's pulled across the barrier and he's and they've opened it up. And I know the barrier, you can't see it at the moment, but on the barrier it does say that there's no parking. That's not a parking Well, line. that means that only the first person who moved to the barrier is aware that you're not allowed to park there. Yeah. Everyone else that followed yeah. is just parking in Innocent. the area that looks like parking. Then the hysterical mum comes over and goes, oh, my gosh, she's starts crying she goes i've driven from the central coast this has been such a big day for me my son's playing oh, here God. and she goes i can't afford 195 dollars everyone's getting 195 dollars 195 dollar fine for an unsigned area now as we've got the one representative who is talking to every all the parents that are right. blowing up while the other one is still Did going you? from quick, car quick, to car quickly oh rioting. my god and he's going i'm sorry this is centennial park i said it's not centennial parklands this is more park the SCG's right there, and he goes, well, it's a part of Centennial Park. Who, who mate. cares? And who cares where it's from? This woman was crying, saying, I can't afford this. I've oh, had no. to drive all day today to get my son here. Probably take to- the day off work mm-hmm. and fill the car with petrol. Do you know I what's, just, what's I, so frustrating about it? Is there's no 
there's there's no lenience or understanding to certain situations no. where you need to have a level of flexibility for the situation at hand. I agree. You know, it's when if you park in the wrong spot, you've parked in the wrong spot, you get the fine, right? Yeah. If it's clearly signed, no standing, and you park there, you probably know you're going to get the fine. If it's a situation where you're just trying to find a park, you're not really breaking any rules, and you're actually helping out and accommodating the crowd that's going to be here, then so be it. Find the flexibility. Because I, I, I do understand. I, well, you, I understand that I should have got a fine because I went up to this guy face to face and I looked at him and I went, this is your job. Oh, oh you? were you one of those I said, guys? Mate, I said, mate, just, just think about it for one second. This is your job. And then I pointed to the mum and I said, mate, don't worry about me, but look after her. Uh, or, you know, I already filled it out, mate. Already filled it out. Yeah, Nothing I can do about it. Done, as, if, as if that is... I mean, that's a trained response and that annoys the hell out of me. Mm. As if a parking officer can't incorrectly um, uh, uh, enter something. Mm. So therefore, they must be able to reverse it and go, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. So they must be able to make that change. Well, maybe they so can't, they, though, because they are answerable to someone. Like, I Look, I have had fines that have been incredibly irritating, but I do understand the situation that you're talking about Outfits. Yeah. But I do, I also have to say, I don't like it when people speak to parking officers yeah, Kate, badly. Here's oh, the problem, on, here's the problem in Sydney. The parking officer treats every person that parks like they're guilty. Yeah. Right? Well, Until proven innocent. Well, they probably are that's if they're not, in a no stopping. But that's not no, in si- Fitzy's situation last night. There was no innocent, signs. Innocent until proven guilty. Mm. I get it. I so, get it. So why do they always go on the collect the cash side of things instead of realise the situation yeah. and consider it acceptable to park there? Do you know the other thing that really makes me angry? I got a note yesterday uh, from the, I don't know, traffic, whatever. Anyway, it says for the 13 points that you're allowed, you've just hit the 10 point mark. Oh, have you of, really? Of um, you? What fines, have you been right? Doing? Speeding? I, I, I lost two points for a parking fine. No way. Yeah. So here's a trap. I understand if I've been speeding, I've broken the rules. I'll cop that, I'll pay the fine, and I'll cop the points. Yeah. If I've parked somewhere where I thought it was fine to park, and I've misunderstood a sign or something of that accord, and you fo- you give you, you dock me two points, two traffic points. Yeah, yeah I don't understand that. I think that's parking, a bit mean. Yeah. But the thing is, the parking oh the, what a, the parking inspector, oh, I know what you're saying, this is your job, mate. But And I know they are not popular, and it's a really crappy job, I think, generally, because they, they do cop it from everyone. But those people that are the parking inspectors, we have a woman that does it in the area that I live, like in the, like the street and the adjoining streets. They are people, too, with families to feed. Yeah, they are. You know, like, they do have to go to work and fulfil their uh, obligation. But maybe that is... Don't don't fill your quota with people that are innocent. But that might be their job. That might be what... That's only being handed down to them. I don't think they rock up to work and make the rules. They make the decision. Just have a bit of... They make the decision. Listen to people's stories. I can understand. Give me one. But the mum that was crying from the Central Coast, pleading her case... And take my ten points. Off. You know, I feel you bad know. now that I did light up. Oh, well, you had a cigarette well, in front no, of you. I just got out. Yeah, <laughs> I got out some unleaded and I just lit up Central <laughs> Centennial Park. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Can we stop everything for a minute? There's mm. breaking news here. Is Wait this, up. Is there? Hang no, on. No, 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 no. Okay, so we need ago. to. So the, t- uh, the Today Show are going with this, saying that uh, Harry and Meghan have broken up. Taking time apart. Separating, it says. M- MDG, what have you got from the newsroom? It's just there couldn't be less. Yep. Fact to these sources at the moment. Okay, now, so what have you obviously got? At, uh, with these things where there is smoke, there, there tends to be fire. a little bit of fire yeah. that may come. But at the moment, sources are denying rumours that there is trouble in paradise. There is no official word from any so, of the. So where Sussex did it come from? 
Well, the UK tabloids are suggesting that they are spending more time apart, that there is financial strain oh. in the relationship okay. and that they are Sorry, have they on now? the way out. You know what the have British they... tabloids are like? They're, They're I mean, on the money. Pra- pra- practically gospel. Can you tell me, MDG, yes. are you saying that because of the time apart they've concluded that or are you saying that they've released a statement saying that they're spending some time apart? No, they've just... It kicked off when Radar Online reported on Tuesday that the couple is, quote, taking time apart in an effort to heal and rebuild their bond amid a rocky period, but a Sussex insider quickly hit back telling Page Six that a spec- any speculation of a breakup is untrue. Oh my God, I mean, our inside reporter for the Royal Family, Thomas Brian Ivy, what are you reading there? No, exactly what Matt DeGroote said. There's no, um, it hasn't been substantiated at all yet. No evidence. No well, evidence. Of course well, they're going to deny it. I'm just talking to all my friends who I comment with on the Mailey Dale, and, and what they're are they saying, saying, what are the boys they're saying? saying it's over. <laughs> It's what? over. Do you know what was very interesting, though? When Lizzie came to the, the studio door and said it's the, the news is swirling mm. and there's chat swirling in the newsroom and yep. it's kind of popping up in lots of different places, the the reaction from everyone in the room... Yes. Uh, I mean, what I don't do know if think? I want to reveal the it. way I reacted, but, I, but well, you, I know my mother would be happy. <laughs> yeah. how, how, was, how, was, how was my fatherly figure and tone that I went with, come home, son. Do you know what it's... <laughs> do, who went with it the hardest? Was it Was it the Today Show? Um, yeah, the Today Show. Are uh, running it? Yeah, but they're, you know, this is it's... how it works. They put, they, they talk about it. Someone in the newsroom, Ron this... says, Harry and Megan are breaking up. Lizzie runs straight to you guys and yeah. says, they're over. You well, guys say on air and I, next minute, I was minute, shocked. Here I was shocked. We are. What, were, what were your thoughts, though? I is felt emotional. I wanted thing? to have a little cry and I don't know why. Yeah. Like Apparently, I just I, I you know what I've always tried to to support Megan I have to say because I so do I. think that they have really copped it like of course there would be an element of truth oh, to no. what has been floating around mm. but I do think that oh my goodness they have really had to stand up oh, against the worst guys, of it. it looks stressful what are the boys saying No mate? Richard Wilkins has just said that Jeff Goldblum's fallen well, off a cliff no that's not true <laughs> well, no. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast um, I quite fancy Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy. So yeah, he's the actor from Oppenheimer. He he's is. also in Peaky Blinders. Peaky oh, Blinders yes. with the little cap. He's got gotcha. those very serious looking eyes. And the he's jaw. Brooding. Mm. Um, he can play bad but vulnerable. I mean, oh. He's quite what striking, an isn't he? What an actor. Swoon. And what an actor. And he takes his job so seriously. I don't know if you... We haven't seen the film yet. Um... Uh, I think it is. Ju- it's just in in cinemas now. I'm going this weekend. Three hours. You know, it's three hours. Oh my god. Oh no. So he was the guy. He was the physicist that mm, basically put together and designed the A bomb. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, well, that's the basis yeah. of the story. That's his name. Um, Emily Blunt uh, plays the wife. Anyway, he lost so he lost so much weight for this film because a, a part of part of the character and getting into character was really taking on the stature. Um, of Oppenheimer, yeah. and I think it said something like he he had a very distinct physicality and silhouette, which he wanted to get right. He had to lose quite a bit of weight. He worked with the costume and tailoring, and he was very slim, almost emaciated. He just existed on martinis and cigarettes, and happened to invent the atomic bomb. Oh, um, the, but the real Oppenheimer did, yeah, the real guy. Right. So that's why Cillian Murphy's gone to great lengths. And Emily's revealed Emily Blunt, his who plays his yeah. wife, has said he was basically eating like an almond. A day. Oh. It, it, I, I love it's arm and a clock. I yeah. love these <laughs> stories it. where actors get into a character and they go to extreme lengths. Who's yeah. the other one? Who's the guy in the machinist? Borat? Uh, Christian Bale? Christian Bale, who yes. played oh, Christian Bale, and um, lose all that weight. I think Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. I think he's a bit of the, Joker. He's, he's mm-hmm. that kind of guy as well. Then on the other scale, which we, we this is the role that Whit wants, was um, Robert De Niro in um, who played uh, the, the boxer. What was the famous movie? And he had to put Cinderella on Cinderella Man. He had to put on sixty kilos. Oh, I thought you were going to say mm. Brendan Fraser in. Um, imagine if they rang. Imagine if Hollywood rang and on. said, "Hey." Sorry, mate. I didn't say anything. I was just looking for my next glossy story. Imagine if someone rang you and said, we're going to give you $20 million. Oh, got some bad news for you. You're going to need to put on 50 kilos. All right. <laughs> when do we start? <laughs> when do we? <laughs> Seafood, do we linguine, what, so what, uh, keep it coming. So Whip goes, oh. so we're starting tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I started five years ago hoping for this role. Oh, but then you've got 
got to get it off. And then you you eventually have to go to an almond today. Um, Miley Cyrus, um, her her sister Noah is in town. She's doing a vet, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Very. Need to explain these jokes. Um, she's in town, very short tour. I think she was at the Metro last night in Sydney. She heads to Melbourne uh, today. She is engaged to a, a German fashion designer, and she was photographed um, outside her hotel in Sydney. Just um, speaking of cigarettes, uh, having a big cigarette and showing off her enormous engagement ring. Oh, is it a really big rock? Is it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, like a ten carat. How good or? is that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't know, but it doesn't. I mean, look. It you doesn't matter how nice. You diamonds the whole time during the show. When the songs are on here, Kate Ritchie is on diamond.com. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I do. <laughs> Licking through big rocks. Yeah, trying to find your next Christmas present for Lisa. <laughs> Someone told um, me the other day that the marketing plan behind diamonds, the diamonds are the most overrated things on earth. How? And it was a marketing campaign where they, was it diamonds are Don't a girl's, girl's best, best friend? friend that was or a that was... Dim- no, diamonds are forever. Oh, yes. Like, I mean, it's another gem. It's another gem. Why didn't the ruby take off or the emerald take off? Well, they all have their it own lines. It was a lanes. marketing um, plan that started very early, Kate. So and it was it took the, off. It, it, the diamond was kind of diamonds were the the, the chosen ones. Well, a they, bit like in our industry, there are people who are not necessarily better than the rest. No, but they're plucked but from obscurity it, and made the star gem. of the show. They're just another gem. But for some reason, this marketing plan took off, and yep. women just wanted diamonds. Isn't it funny that women like diamonds are a girl's best friend? It's just women. Men. And men got dogs. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah. A dog is a man's I best friend. I have a dog. Oh. It's nice to have both. Dogs you and diamonds. Dogs and diamonds. <laughs> dogs and diamonds. My new book by it, Kate Ritchie. Um, and uh, I, I just want to touch on Sophia Vergara again. Me I know um, you serenaded her once on it, the show. I think we one. might even have a little Can bit of that. Oh, yes. That's right, I wanted to go on a I date with her. No, right now, what will it be? Oh, Did you yeah. play that to her? Let me be a date. Yeah, what was interesting? It, <laughs> don't look like Manny when he's older. Don't look like Manny when he's older. I wouldn't have written that. <laughs> um, we met, and as I said to you beforehand, it was probably the greatest threat to my relationship with Reece, Lisa to date. You know, well, like, no we wonder, was, because not only did you tell me you met, but, bef- I mean, it quick as a flash, Whipper uh, could pull up photos and videos of meeting Sofia Rega- Vergara on his phone, and that looked like it was 10 years ago. We, well, not that long ago. We were flirting outrageously. She wasn't flirting with you. She flirts with everyone. That's what she does. It's her MO. And what's weird is now that she's single, I feel like, oh, I'm under threat again. Well, do you drink? Do I drink? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Well, you might fit in because they're saying that part of the reason why her and the husband have separated and, and had to go um, their separate ways. It was always doomed because he he is in recovery. He's had issues oh, with addiction in right. his 20s, um, uh, closely related to alcohol, and she had quite big partying ways. Right. So they couldn't do that together. It's too much of a threat to someone who is in recovery to be having a partner mm. who likes to have, you know, numerous cocktails and party with friends in New York. Yeah, right. Um, so they're saying that that, that might that may have um, uh, been the end of it. Oh, could you imagine being in an argument with her? She would strip pieces I wouldn't off you, wouldn't she? Well, you'd hope so. You'd have your fingers crossed, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> I'll just be over here on the couch. You keep yelling. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is the jump in my car. It's Nova's Impressa for Kate Ritchie's Impressa. You need to impress Kate. What can you do? I can lick my elbow. Wow. Well, does impress me much. Hayley, oh. with the short hair and the huge tongue, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> We're setting the bar really low, aren't we? Well, we had our first in studio Lincoln entry today. Elbows. <laughs> Ricky Lee. Licking elbows in someone who can't sing. Ricky Lee Not Ricky in. Lee. Not Ricky Lee. She, um, she tried guy. to impress you with, by releasing a brand new single today. And you said, no, you're not one of the finalists. Well, I'm she so has sorry. a very unf- unfair advantage. And I know, she has a car park downstairs and already has a car. That's true. Also, so could it's not, not fair. lick her elbow. Grace in <laughs> Five Dock, how are you going to impress Kate, Grace? Um, I'm good, thanks. I am going to tell her a story of when I worked overseas and looked after a lot of celebrity kids. At a boarding school and got to know a few of them on first name basis, oh, including their parents. Here we go. Oh, Grace, okay. Take it away. So, um, about 10 years ago, when I was a fresh 18 year old, I moved overseas as a gap year student, as a lot of people do. 
and I worked at this alternative um, boarding school, Muslim boarding school in the countryside. And because of its, I guess, ethos, a lot of celebrities sent their kids there to be boarders. Yeah. So um, the kids themselves have also grown up and been quite famous, um, and they're like actors and act- actresses. Um, models and things like that. So, uh, in particular, I looked after Kate Winslet's kids, and I became on first name basis with her and oh, her husband, awesome. who's obviously um, Richard Brandon's nephew. And this was during the time where she was pregnant with her youngest child, but we knew before any of the magazines or anything yeah, like that. So, right. like, she was really hush hush. So, drop yeah. a couple of other names, Grace. Who else was at um, the school? Well, you don't even need so to have another after, name if, you, if it's Kate Winslet. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> oh, oh, just like I, oh, I want to be her friend. <laughs> she actually, she was honestly amazing. She was so down to earth and so both of her kids were. They were really, really lovely. And what would very, she very wear lovely. to school pick up? Sorry, oh, now I'm getting sidetracked. No, no, but what, what kind wears. of mum was she? Like what kind of shoes? Would Active she wear her tracksuit? Or was she always impeccably dressed with her hair done? No, no, she was com- completely down to earth. So jeans, jumper, often she'd wear a beanie and some heavy sunglasses just to make it obvious. That oh. so kids weren't, you know, would be the focus of attention, not her and things like that. Oh. So we, everyone knew who she was. But so, any other names, um, Grace? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so I looked after Anna Gallagher, Anna Gallagher, who it was Noel Gallagher's daughter. Yes. Yes. Um, who's like a model in did, her own right now. Did you and see Noel? Would Noel pop no, in? No. No. The entire year that I was there, he didn't go to the school, unfortunately, uh, which was a bit of a thing. Not once. Not he didn't once. go almost the entire time that she actually was enrolled there. He never fighting with his brother. That's why. That's useless. <laughs> So she's walked at Milan Fashion yep. Week. Um, Esme Creed Miles, so she's an actress now. She played Hannah in that um, Amazon yes. Prime thing, but her parents, um, so her mum's okay. Madison Wharton, who was in The Walking Dead wow, as Alpha. Geez. So I got to know her as well. This is um, amazing. And now you're right, talking guys. To I want to know what school this is. Are you allowed to say the name of the school? Yeah, no, so all these, ki- all these kids are now adults, so that's why I can do this yeah. now, and it's well known which school they went to. They went to... Um, Dunhurst was the middle school that I worked at, and then it was Bedales. Oh, so it was the same school Dunhurst that, like, Lily Allen went to and Juno Temple and, Madonna. you know, Cara Delevingne, all of those people. Wow. So there's a lot of a lot of celebrities that went to the school. But, yeah, Great I was story, a Great story, Grace. <laughs> Amazing, Grace. Mm. Well done. That's excellent. Mm. Stephanie in Mount Druid. Hi, Steph. Hi. How old are you, Steph? Oh, hi, Steph. I'm nine years old. Nine years oh, wow. old. Okay, okay well, you've, you've got Kate Ritchie. You're probably too early to drive the car, but you could hold on to it until you get your L's. Yeah, maybe mum needs a car. What are your mum and dad driving? Um, They're driving a BMW. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so they're struggling. Okay, okay so, one. Steph, nice. what is your special skill that you have to impress Kate? Um, I have a uh, yodeling. Oh, oh, you can yodel? Yes. It's quite a talent oh, for a nine-year-old, isn't it? Do you need have to you... warm up? Uh, no. Do you get lessons on yodelling, Steph? No. No. Okay. All right. Here okay. we go. We're going to take down the music, and you can yodel for us, Steph. Little old lady, you lay, you lay, you lay, he who you lay, you lay, you lay, he who you lay, you lay, you lay, you lay, you lay, he who little old lady. No. Oh wow! That was amazing. That. What an nah. effort. And for oh. so early in the morning, oh, you should God. be at Look school. Look at that. Goosebumps, Not, yeah, not I know, great. Me too. That's, oh. And your mum and dad have got a beamer, and they, they realise it's a Subaru, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually winning this car for my brother because um, his girlfriend's about to have a baby, and um, they have no car and they live in the country, so I want my little nephew to be safe. Oh, oh this is a yeah, step whipper. Step. Yeah, so suck yeah, on that whipper. Yeah, that whipper is whipper you rolling okay. your had eyes had a go over her, there. And now she's you don't understand. She wasn't, she wasn't, oh, Stephanie, she wasn't not yodeling. only are you a great yodeler, <laughs> but you're yodel. a very caring younger sister. Thank you so much that for calling beautiful, this Steph. morning. Let's go to Anna in Penrith. Pen- uh, hello, Penrith in Anna. <laughs> All right, what? Good morning. Good morning, Anna. I'm so, I'm so sorry. How is it in you've Penrith? Been, you've impressed me. This morning. Oh, yeah. It's quite cold. There's a lot of ice on the cars. This morning, I bet the there is. Oh. Let's quickly move oh, this oh, along. Have you and... been penning the riff? <laughs> oh. um, okay, what's your trick for us, Anna? Well, I couldn't think of anything that I could really do because I really need this car, Kate. Like, I can't tell you how much I need this car. Okay, but why? What are you driving? Well, I'm driving a hire car at the moment. My car was hit by a truck while I was stopping a red light a couple of months ago, so it got totaled. 
So I'm still in the hire car from, mm. from the insurance, but yeah. the only thing I could think of that no one else could do that I know of is I can bend my thumb back to my wrist, and I've always been able to do that. Is that you, you so double-jointed, or what do they call that, dislocated thumb, or <laughs> good for radio, really good for radio? <laughs> I know, really good for radio. I did send a video through, however, oh. I don't. I can only do it with one thumb. I can't do it with the other well, one. Well, don't it's say just, that. Let's oh, not got, well, get bogged down in the negatives. Wow. Let's go with what you can do, Anna. Well, Tommy's just showing us. That is amazing. I don't even yeah, want to so see it, Tom. I can bend it flatter back, back oh. against my wrist. Oh, that is so I can just flexible. imagine what that looks like oh, if you can like do it. Oh, no wonder it's Peter my only talent. You. Jesus Christ. Mm, is that where we're going? We are ST rugby. <laughs> now I'm just looking at a girl licking her elbow again, oh, but I can sorry, imagine it's from, only... From that's what? your screensaver, That's not Timmy. an elbow. My apologies. Oh, um, um, I mean, look, the, the line-up this morning, we've got Grace, ruggling. who was the... Uh, the girl so, at the oh, you don't I can't even remember. You don't, celebrity stories. You don't celebrity school. The girl at the school. We've got the BMW driver in Mount Druitt. I mean, I think we're just going to have to put the riff in. Um, oh. And oh. It does impress me much. You went with Anna over Stephanie, who could yodel. Oh, yes, because oh Anna God. needs the car. Then this is what we... I mean, I know... There's oh. a man who's about to have a baby and doesn't have wheels, but I'm going to go with Anna. Oh, Steph is crying. Thank Don't you go. so much. Well done, Anna. You're in the running. Don't For go doing back. a trick I haven't even seen. Yeah. Don't, please old, don't go back to Steph. She's crying her eyes. The old oh. rubber thumb. Anna's through with a rubber thumb. Everyone this morning wins tickets to the Barbie movie, though, oh, guys. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Nice. So, so, Steph, you really get to nice. go see Barbie. That'll be awesome. Fitzy and Weaver with Kate Ritchie. Hey, that's a secret. Podcast password. If you want to get your hands on stacks of great prizes, just head over to our Instagram stories at Fitzy Whipper Kate and enter this password. Today's password is... Soccer. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. You want to talk about dying for love, there's been a uh, celebrity separation overnight, which has absolutely shocked me. And I'm almost a little bit disgusted by it. Tim Shattuck. Shattuck, Shattuck. Oh, yeah, this is the sailor, the Australian sailor that was on the high seas. Looks a little bit like Tom Ivey. Um, He was rescued after three months just off the coast of Mexico. We know this story. Um, Tommy, we're trying to get him on the show. Yeah. Um, He admitted that he just ate raw fish and he was drinking rainwater to survive. He only had one love on the boat, and that was his dog, Bella. Yeah. Well, we were talking about this. I wonder if there was a moment where he thought about eating Bella, but he didn't. Mm. Bella no. got him through. He was under a cover as well, so he mm. wouldn't... Get su- sunburned. Yeah. Yes. I mean, for, for Castaway, like the movie with Tom Hanks, Wilson the ball that he talks to, Bella would have been his Wilson. Yeah, I guess so. Just... Did, did, um, did Tom have a dog in that movie? No. I've never seen it. Tommy never got a dog. Okay. No, Do he just had a ball that he would talk to. I read another article on it as well. He went for a couple of swims. Did he? Yeah. Yep. He did just he? said, yep. He said, I did. I tried to be with one with the water. So he, he said, I just thought, you know, I've just got to look at the positive things here. And I'm in this beautiful ocean and this beautiful water. And he took Bella for a couple of little swims and then come back to the boat. Oh, oh so he was on holidays. Yeah. We we're all worried about him. <laughs> no, no, he had, he had a staff of <laughs> 13 a, on there. <laughs> He's just drinking well, see, Midori. Got, and was, <laughs> sorry, I meant to add, it was Carnival Cruise. So he's doing oh. horses. He's doing horses off the side and yeah. he's ordering, ordering pina coladas. It was a 200 foot super yacht. I, I forgot to mention worried. that. Yeah, had its own jet skis on it, <laughs> had a tender, he had a submarine on it. Anyway, here's the sad part. He's decided to uh, make his way back to Australia. He's jetted off. He wants to come home. Of course, that makes sense. Bella the dog has been left in Mexico. I, I feel really good. I, 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 I've been struggling to sort, you know, the health was, was pretty bad for a while. I was pretty hungry and I didn't think I'd make it through the, the storm, but now I'm really doing good. It sounds like you're doing really good as you book your business class seat back to Australia. Leave the and dog behind. Bella. Maybe well, you- you're the dog, Tim. Well, he, he, wow. Yeah, I, I mean, that's sorry, full I on. Snapped. You can't. Look, do we know he has left Bella there 
for good because you we all know you can't just put a dog on the plane you have to spend a lot of money and mm. put them through quarantine, quarantine and yeah, yes. all, all spend of, it Tim all of that is Bella on her way or is this no. a parting of Bella, permanent ways Bella's at home being looked after by someone being thrown a schmacko on the side every now and maybe then maybe she's fine maybe she's been eaten maybe. would have been a great mm. episode of border security he, he's finally home the hero's here I can't believe he survived that much and then mm. he goes through customs <laughs> They open up his suitcase. Well, Bella's in Bella. What, dead? Mate, you cannot. I'm sorry, sorry Tim. Mate. Bella's got to go into quarantine what, for he, six months. And he ends up getting jailed <laughs> for trying to smuggle a dog into the country. <laughs> You're right. It's a great ending to the movie. So our thoughts are with Bella. I think we're going to start a GoFundMe page here. We're looking for schmackos. <laughs> we're looking for pig's ears. Anything a dog might like to chew on. Um, if he could <laughs> come to the party and help out. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh yeah, the life improver. Your life improver! With super advice and super returns, Aware Super is super helpful. Find out how Aware Super can help you get more from your super today. Read the PDS and TMD at aware.com.au. Let's go straight to Tanya in George's Hall. Good morning, Tan. Good morning, folks. How are you? Good. Yeah, you, good need, you need to motivate us for 2023. What have you got for us? Oh, I've got a great hack that if you're uh, bitten by mozzies, um, the way to take the itch out of the bite is to put the green Listerine on it. Green Listerine? Okay, the mouthwash. Really? So yeah, I think it we're, takes the itch out of it. We're doing ads for Listerine at the moment. Oh, yeah. I'm hearing them on Nova. They don't mention the mozzie So bite. they don't say stop that mozzie sting? <laughs> no, they don't. They talk about God. good breath and oral hygiene. <laughs> oral hygiene and stop that sting. <laughs> All right, Tan, thank you. We'll take that into consideration. Sam in Hunters Hill, Life Improver. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, thank you, sir. That's good. Yeah, so look, you know when you get your sushi hand rolls, you get the little uh, fish-shaped soy sauce with it? Yeah. Yeah, so what you do, instead of putting it through the top or bottom, you just go straight through the seaweed, punch two holes in it, and put it straight through and spread your soy sauce all through the the sushi roll. Yeah, really good. It's It's like sticking your sauce through the top of the pie, isn't it, and squeezing it. Uh, That's clever, just piercing the side of your hand roll or sushi roll. I'm just, you know what I'm Mm. starting to pick up as well with sushi joints is that... um, They're there all day? No, well, the the, the soya sauce is getting watered down quite a bit. Do you think it is? It's getting, the colour of it's getting lighter and lighter. What, at the restaurant or do you mean in the little fish bottle? In the little fish. Oh, that's a huge call, mate. I'm stepping back Oh, but don't you think that some some restaurants might use a light soy? Soy, and then there are others that use the darker Kate, soy. You, there are different Kate, versions. everyone loves a dark soy. Are you suggesting they refill the Kickerman with a little bit of water? Yes, a Kickerman. You never kick water down out, the Kickerman, you know man. I mean. No Ra- way. Rachel and St Ives, give us a life hack, Rach. Hey, guys. Our mother-in-law takes all our dunas and inserts and she stitches um, ribbon to the corners. And then when you put the doona in yeah. the insert, you tie each corner, and then your doona never slips down when you're in bed and you never lose it. Oh, yeah. Rach, you know what? I've been thinking about that or some solution for that what? for a long time, and I've never done anything about but it. But that's it lovely. Is the best. You have a mother-in-law that does that. There are actually... Yep. I have bought some doona covers that have them like already. Like a Velcro corner. They're in. Wow. They have They have, like, shoelaces in the in, yeah. inner, inner corners. That's genius, and it's isn't brilliant it? because we all know you end up with half Oh, yeah. so annoying. So annoying. Nights. Is Rach winning so far? That's a really good well, call. I, think, I don't know if that's a life hack. but really? I, uh, It is. It is a life oh, hack. Oh, okay, Rachel. <laughs> sorry, you win. <laughs> no. We, wow, it's we, very early for that level of aggression. <laughs> We've got one more. Brooke in Glenmore Park. Life hack, Brooke. Good morning, team. Okay, so this one's um, for flight. Yep. So if you want to go on holiday. Mm. So you go onto Google, yep. type in flight, yep. and then you put your, obviously Sydney would be your starting point most of the time, yep. and your day that you want to go. Yep. yep. Then you drop down into the map, it'll come up with the map of Australia, but if you minimise and just hover over the actual place where you want to go, yes. it brings up all different prices for flight. So, so it finds you the cheapest Price if it'll you just hover. You, yeah. yeah, it'll show you like when you look just looking at it, like I'm just looking at it now, mm. it'll show you like one price, but if you zoom in on that spot, it'll come up with a list of all different prices. Or Brooke, you could go to What If. 
Well, that's the other option. Um, yeah, they well, compare all the you prices. You could go there. to Wadi. Go to Wadi. If I was on Wadi, it's last a lot night. easier and it's quicker and it will give you the cheapest <laughs> price. Well, <that's>, I mean, <laughs> Fitzy's the winner today. <laughs> hey, can I throw in a late entry oh, too? Please, let's give it to Rachel. Um, yes. Do you know what? There's a couple of things which I've got an issue with around packaging. Um, you know when you buy like a six or eight or ten pack of Sultanas? Yes. That packaging there is too hard to open. That's really annoying to get your first box of Sultanas out. What, I've got an plastic? issue with that. Yeah. Right. Um, the other one is, and I've had a huge problem with it, the lollipop. So like if you get a Chubba Chump, yeah. to get the wrapper off the a what? lollipop. What's it called? Chubba, Chubba Chump. Chump. A what? Chubba, Chubba Chump. A what? Chubba. Chubba Chump. A chubba chump. Chubba chump. No. Chubba chump. No. no, one more time. Oh, no. Chubby. Everyone quiet. What chubby. is it? Chubby oh. chump. Oh, I only just realised. He's only, only just realised he can't okay, say so chubba chump. Chubba chump. How do you spell it, I mate? thought they were two different words. How do you spell it? Chupa. C-H-U-P-P-A. C-H-O-M-P. Chupa chomp. Like you chomp on the top. (laughs) You can't combine a lollipop with the caramel sensation of chomp. A chupa chomp. A chupa chomp. A chomp a chomp. I I don't know. Chupa chimp. It's a chupa chup. Chippy chump. Chupa chup. Anyway, let's not worry about me not knowing what the lollipop's called. The wrapper is a pain in the bum. This guy has come out on TikTok explaining that we've all been getting it wrong. We have been opening lollipops incorrectly our entire lives. Come here. So you guys know these kinds of lollipops that you get at the store, right? You see how they're super wrapped on the bottom, and if you have nails, it's really hard to try to open them? Well, there's a way easier way to do it, and I'll show you. Naturally, growing up, we would try to take off the plastic from the bottom, but sometimes it would be so tightly packaged that it ends up hurting your fingers. Well, these are leverage wrappers. What you're supposed to do is grab the top and the bottom and then twist on the opposite side. If you just keep twisting, eventually it comes right off. You hold onto the stick and twist it. Yeah, but you don't try in and the opposite peel it direction. off. Yes, Kate it's Ritchie. so tight. It's so tight onto the lollipop. No, you, you can't. You don't try and pull it with your fingers. You let the stick do the work like a fishing rod. Let that do all the heavy lifting and you twist the stick. We might need to get some chompity chump, oh, chump and chump. Get chump. some chompity chumps in the, chump. in the <laughs> studio. Get some chompity chumps. Ch- the, the chump- what is chump- it called? Kate. Oh, I couldn't chump- be bothered talking. Here, and I chump- think there's chump- an obvious winner. Well, it, there is an obvious winner, and that winner is Rachel from Rachel! St. Yeah! 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 I'll have to share it with my mother-in-law. Well done. How good is that? $500 cash thanks to Aware Super. Life Improver will be back next week. We like the Life Improver. How good's the Life Improver? Oh, yeah, the Life Improver. Your life. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.